Hi guys, it's Graham with Ragnar Tactical. Hey, we're going to talk about the four stages of the trigger press and how we can use that to make ourselves a better marksman. So anytime I manipulate a weapon, I always look inside three or four times just to make sure it's unloaded. I make sure I'm pointed in a safe direction. So I'm going to lock the slide to the rear and I can look inside the magazine well, I can look inside the chamber just to make sure. It doesn't hurt to even do it a couple of times just to make sure there's nothing in there so there's no food bars. Okay, so the first stage of a proper trigger press is placement of the trigger finger. So I need to place the trigger on the center of the final pad of my index finger. A lot of that is, does the gun fit my hands? So if a gun is too big for my hands as a right hander, it's the trigger, I'm not gonna have enough finger on the trigger and it's gonna push it left as I press the trigger. If my hand is too big, it's gonna be in too deep, which is gonna cause me as a right hander to pull it. So I wanna make sure that it's dead centered because I wanna push it straight to the rear. So that's the first stage. The second stage is getting through all that creep. That's all that garbage that you get to until you get to the wall. The wall is when you feel that it's about to discharge. So with the wall, once I hit that wall, I need to be thinking primarily about my knuckle joint and my index finger, making sure that my finger is coming straight back, not that my entire finger is coming straight back. So in other words, this forward part of my finger needs to be acting independently rather than pulling the entire trigger because that will push me to one side. If you shoot a gun a lot, you'll become in tune with that trigger. You'll know exactly when that wall is going to break and that weapon is going to discharge. Okay? After that, I let it out until I feel and hear the click of the trigger resetting on a semi-automatic pistol. So I press the trigger, it discharges, which sends a slide back, which in turn reloads the weapon and recocks it. I let it out just until I feel and hear that click and that's enough. So as you can see, I've only let it out roughly halfway and it's already reset. If I'm letting the, my finger all the way off the trigger, it's problematic for a couple of reasons. One is I have to place the trigger all over again. Two is I have to pull through all that creep again. So in other words, we're kind of cheating. What we're trying to do is shorten the trigger in half. Boom, click, boom, click, rather than boom, off, boom, off, boom, off. Okay, so each time I press the trigger, it discharges. I let it out just until I feel and hear the click. With practice, you can do this really fast. You can do it faster than you can actually say it. So shortening that trigger will make you a more accurate shooter and it'll also make you a faster shooter. My biggest advice to you is you get plenty of dry fire in. Obviously find a safe direction, triple check to make sure it's unloaded, have no live ammo in the vicinity. But then practice your trigger over and over. So I press the trigger, I rack it, which simulates it discharging, and then I let it out just like feeling here a click, no further. And I just continue to do that over and over. Obviously find your sights and practice your side line and side, side picture at the same time. So the more you shoot a gun, the more you will become in tune with that trigger and when it's gonna actually discharge. People often make the mistake of bouncing around from gun to gun, trying to find a better gun to make them shoot better, when really all they need is more practice. You can find us on Instagram, you can find us on Facebook, you can find us on the web, Ragnar Tactical, look for us on YouTube. Thanks, I hope this has been a help to you. Take care.